Thank you, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jason Clark. For anybody who doesn't know me, which I think is quite a few people here, um, and I'm the Assistant Director of Sustainability. Um, I was supposed to start today by um, a bit of housekeeping, getting, but I think you already know where all of the fire assembly points are, so we'll, we'll, we'll go beyond that. Um, so firstly, to thank everybody that's here today. Um, it's amazing to see how um, the awards have grown over the years. Um, I've only been here for a short while, but I've seen um, how previous awards have been, and this is an amazing turnout um, that we have here today. Um, the last bit of housekeeping that I have to do before we get into talking about the awards themselves is um, this is obviously a hybrid event. Um, so if there, at any point, and as you can tell by the technical difficulties that we've just had, if, you, if you're online and you um, can't hear or anything like that, please leave a note in the chat and, or put a, or, yeah, and just let us know and we'll try and make some changes. So that, now that that admin is out of the way, just moving on to the awards themselves. Um, as I say, I've only been at UCL for nine months now. But in the nine months that, I'm, that I've been here, I've learned about so much that has happened over the last few years. Um, examples such as, you know, uh, coming in seventh in the People and Planet University League, sending uh, 20 academics to COP27, and again looking to send more academics this year to COP20, COP28, and feeding into the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, as well as all of the other things that we've seen, for example, the LEAF program, which has gone from um, strength to strength and has truly turned into an international um, framework for looking at the sustainability of labs. So it's really amazing some of the work that's gone on over the last few years. But, what it's quite, but whilst it's, it's great and we need to celebrate these things and it's really important that we have events like this, it's also, it also um, reconfirms exactly the sort of challenge that we have. Um, you know, the reports, the IPPC report has mentioned how we have a tightening or closing window to make significant change. And to make that significant change, we really need to work together to make those change. And so events like this, which celebrate how we're all working together to make sustainable change are so important. And I'm really, really glad to be part of this. So, other talking points that I have to, um, that I have to um, touch on today is really about how the, um, award, what the awards are going to work today. We've got two fantastic speakers who I'll be passing on to shortly, um, who will be talking about how UCL is making this sustainable change as we move forward. And also to pick up on how this is really an inflection point for UCL. We launched a really ambitious strategy in 2019, um, our 2019 to 2024 sustainability strategy. And that's obviously coming to an end with it being 2024 next year. So this is an opportunity for us to really engage with the wider community and start moving our own sustainability plan forward for the next, to align with the um, UCL strategic plan and also to 2027 and also further than that out to for the next 10 years as to how we'll really um, set out our stall around sustainability at UCL. So that's enough of me waffling on about that sort of stuff. Let's talk about how the awards are going to work today. So the awards are going to be slightly different to um, previous years. And let me just check my notes to see how, how they're going to be different. Um, we'll be announcing the Green Impact and LEAF teams together before moving on to the special awards. And the time is, is a, is a, even, it's even, the time is even tighter than we thought before. We've had so many teams come through this year. If just checking the numbers here, we've had 48 green impact submissions and 71 leaf submissions. So unfortunately, we won't be able to read out all of them, um, uh, but we will be reading out the um, the gold award winners. Um, but this is a, it's an enormous testament to the amount of work that's gone on from all of the teams who have submitted for both Green Impact and LEAF. And without those teams, we wouldn't be here today. So it's very, very important. So can we have a very quick round of applause for everybody that's actually submitted to those teams? <laughs> if 
thank you. And those of you who um, aren't, aren't having your names um, read out and will be coming up to the front to receive awards, you'll be able to receive your awards afterwards um, outside and we'll also be putting up um, a QR code later on which is letting you know how you'll be um, receiving certificates and so on. Or have I got that wrong, Max? <laughs> For now, it's right, but Max will tell me later how I've got it wrong. Okay, so... Um, I was actually supposed to be up here with our um, Vice President of Operations, um, Amy um, Chapel, today, but unfortunately, she can't be here today, but by the miracle of technology, she has um, left a message for us, which I think we can play now. Amy Chapel, Sustainability Awards, July 2023. Welcome to the 2023 UCL Sustainability Awards. I'm Amy Chapel, and whilst I am really sorry I'm unable to be with you this afternoon, I did want to stop and just congratulate all of the Green Impact and LEAF teams that have submitted awards today and just say how excited I am to be working with you here at UCL. I joined UCL in May this year to serve as the VP of Operations, and I was really encouraged by the work that you all are doing. Whether it's in our commitments to operate UCL in a much more sustainable environment or in this amazing research that tackles the really big questions like plastic waste, clean air, or enabling a circular economy, your work is impressive. For me, it comes together through our teaching, our everyday work, and our research as we tackle our grand challenge for climate change. This challenge gives us all an opportunity to bring this work together through our Living Lab, our Sustainability Student Council, and through our Ambassador Program. Today, we have over 160 student ambassadors. And for me, I just think about the pass it forward opportunity that this creates as those students take all that we do and all that they learn at UCL and they bring those messages out into the world through their wider work. Together, we are creating solutions that can make a real difference and the impact is tremendous. Now, whilst I'm proud of everything that I've learned so far, we all know that worryingly, there is much more that we must do. UCL is a place that encourages us to experiment and to test what we can do together. And I am really inspired by this opportunity. It's about building novel and innovative solutions in our own communities, as well in all those communities that we can influence. And so today, as we celebrate the journey and the journey yet to come, I'm excited. Sustainability has been a topic that's been close to my work throughout my career. It started in supporting colleagues with a sustainability practice during my consulting days and identifying how to make the opportunity really relevant to the many different industries and the customers that we served. Or later as CEO, where I encouraged my teams to think about the environment in which they worked in and how they could influence that as well as through our supply chain to tackle our overall commitments. And of course, it plays out in my household too, as my daughters encourage us to buy from suppliers and use products that have also made these types of commitments. I know a lot of hard work has gone into making the difference you've already made, including getting ready for today. So, I just want to stop and say thank you to everyone who's been nominated, to everyone who has an idea for the next wave of our plans, and of course, to those of you that will be celebrated today for the work that you've contributed. Please enjoy the event, and I look forward to supporting you in the next chapter of our work together. Okay, so thank you very much to Amy for um, those words there. 
Um, and a point of clarification, I knew I was going to get something wrong, and Max has now informed me of what I got wrong, which was that um, the, we won't be reading out the Gold Award winners. What we will be reading out is the special award winners. Um, but the names of the Bronze and Silver Award winners and the Gold Awards winners will be appearing on the screen. And at the end of this hour, there'll be a, um, a QR code which will come up, which will enable you to find out a little bit more about the teams that have um, submitted for both of, both of the types of awards. That's um, Green Impact and LEAF. And for those people who um, are either receiving awards, they'll be available outside. And for those that do, I'm, I'm looking at Max, I'm getting something else wrong. I'm going to keep going anyway. Um, and he'll tell me if I've got it wrong later. Um, and there will be an opportunity to um, send awards to you if you aren't here in person. And there'll also be an opportunity to pick up those awards. So, um, are the names appearing next? Is that the next thing? Yeah. Right, super. So, I think these are the, are these the bronze award winners. At bronze and silver award winners, which are now being scrolled on the screen. So thank you to all the uh, bronze and silver award winners for Green Impact. And um, also thank you for all the phenomenal number of gold award winners that we have, which I believe will be coming up on the screen as well. And I have to mention that the certificates that are going to be received are seeded paper certificates, and they'll also be getting some cakes as well. So it's quite a, you know, it's a, that's a, yeah, it's a decent award, don't you think? Yeah. No money, though. <laughs> and just to say that anybody who, is look who will be looking to um, receive those awards in person, that Max will be at the Student Centre, I think it's on the 26th of July, from 1 until 3, um, to enable people to pick up those awards. And other than that, they'll be sent out internally within the post. So... Moving on to the next, next part, we are very lucky, as I said, to have two fantastic... Oh. Yep, sorry, the LEAF awards. So the LEAF awards are still coming up, sorry. I can't see the screen, that's the problem. Oh, I can, yeah. <laughs> so these are the awards for the LEAF Efficiency Assessment Framework. Firstly, the Bronze Awards. And now the Silver Awards. And lastly, the Gold Awards. Right, now, I'm going to get it right this time. Um, you may have heard me say this before. We have two fantastic speakers um, coming up now. Um, Professor Priti Parikh is one of our climate experts at UCL and is the acting director, acting director, is that correct, Parikh? Yeah, of the um, Bartlett School of Sustainable Construction and a previous winner of the Sustainability Research Award. And we also have um, Zian Xuan, um, who is a final year student in philosophy, uh, politics and economics, and a member of Youngo. Uh, both have been passionate advocates of our climate work at UCL and have taken part in the uh, COP conferences. And we're very privileged to have them both speaking today. And I think first we have yourself, and Jen. Hi, good afternoon everyone. It's lovely to see so many people here. It's been a while since I went to a packed event like this, so wonderful. Also, congratulations to all the um, award recipients, and I'm very honored to be joined by so many of you here. So, my name is Han Shen. Um, I recently graduated from UCL PPE, and I'm also the Yango Focal Point for this year. Uh, for those of you who might not know, Yango is the official children and youth constituency of the UNFCCC. And every year we go to the COPs and many other climate meetings to advocate for youth policy priorities um, and relevant um, policy engagements as well. 
And so what we do every year, and I'll get to those, um, you can see the picture above is actually from the Glasgow COP, which obviously kind of mobilized a lot of the UK institutions, including UCL and others, um, to advocate for greater, more ambitious and more credible climate commitments. And you can see here um, some of us speaking with um, some leaders around the world. So maybe over to the next slide, um, I would share a little bit more about um, kind of what's the role of young people in climate action with so many students in UCL um, taking action. And I in no way represent so much wonderful work being done, but just to share my part, um, we all know the disproportionate risk that climate change poses to young people, to children, um, as well as to future generations. This is something that's well recorded um, through scientific research as well. You can see, for example, that a study done two years ago showed how people born in 2020 face two to seven times more um, severe climate-related events in their lifetimes as compared to those born in 1960. And this is even set to worsen um, for those that come after us. And this is also one of the reasons why I think young people are incredibly important as a stakeholder um, that will be affected, but also will be actively engaged in their work in championing climate action in their everyday lives. And at UCL, for example, many of us will be well aware of the UCL Climate Action Society, which is a huge student-run kind of youth-led society dedicated to empowering UCL students to take a greater role in advocating and taking climate action. Um, but also many of our UCL um, friends and colleagues go on to do sustainability careers um, as well. And for my part, I'm involved in policy advocacy through Yango. Um, you can see some pictures of um, us at COP27 last year in Egypt, where we had the first ever children and youth pavilion, which was a dedicated space to children and youth. Um, and we were actually with the IPCC chair, um, Dr. Ho Sang Lee as well. And here's a photo of us um, in your bottom right um, at the SPs, where most of us have just recently returned from Germany. And maybe moving on to the next slide. Um, so what exactly do we do at these negotiations, um, which are often kind of dominated and led by negotiators and governments? Um, increasingly, I think a lot of these institutions are recognizing the role of young people in not only kind of engaging in actions, um, as you might very well be aware through Greta Thunberg, Vanessa Nakate, and many other famous activists, but also in contributing to concrete policy recommendations that can be taken up, um, that can be meaningfully considered and incorporated into policy engagements. So just citing two out of many, many other examples here, um, the, many of you might be aware of the loss and damage issue. There is a huge, huge um, fight um, by civil society and many governments, um, especially LDCs and SIDS, over the last 30 years, ever since the UNFCCC was established. And um, it, it's very much credit to the amazing work that young people, civil society, and those governments do collectively that we were able to get at COP26 an acknowledgement of loss and damage, and then at COP27, the establishment of the loss and damage finance facility, and this year towards Dubai, um, fingers crossed, hopefully the operationalization of the finance facility itself. And these obviously are not just text on paper, but will have real life outcomes in terms of how developing countries can access some of these finance to deal with climate related impacts. Um, and, 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 but also secondly, looking at conflict of interest. This year we are all going, well many of us are going to Dubai, um, where we are working with an incredibly controversial presidency, one that has links to the fossil fuel industry, and many of us in the youth movement are actively thinking about how we can best engage with this presidency, kind of working with them on issues that matter to us, but also standing by our ground, our principles when we need to be. And this is where many of us have actually been fighting for a conflict of interest policy in the UNFCCC um, to limit the influence of certain stakeholders that are not contributing constructively to this debate. And we are very happy to share that with the UNFCCC Executive Secretary that you can see on your um, top right. Uh, we are happy to share that this year all COP participants will be required to disclose their affiliation, so whose interests they represent at COP you know, who they will be siding with and, and, and similar engagements. And this might also seem like a small detail, but it's a really a step up um, after 30 years of UNFCCC engagements where we basically had no idea who was turning up to these COPs, whose interests they served, and whether or not they were contributing to the goals of the Paris Agreement. Um, and yeah, so just to share some photos there from our recently concluded negotiations at the ESBs, which were uh, quite disappointing, but also we had a lot of young people there um, taking part in different actions. Uh, we also had young people on your bottom right um, delivering interventions, uh, which is when we get a two-minute um, 
kind of space to share about youth expectations of COP, um, which is after six hours of listening to governments, NGOs, and other intergovernmental organizations. So many of us stay um, 2, 3 a.m. just to deliver a two-minute speech, but I think young people recognize the importance of delivering these speeches in influencing the outcome of those negotiations. And maybe moving to my next and final slide, just to share some key takeaways from my time. Um, UCL has been incredible in supporting youth in not only engaging with these processes like the mock COP, for example, that was done for the past two years, um, also by supporting and connecting us with UCL academics um, and other researchers that are engaged in this process. Um, and from there on, you know, young people have obviously also been kind of charting our own path. Um, and so the first insight that I think really comes up to me is that sustainability is and should be everyone's business, but we also need to create a conducive environment like this one where people feel empowered to take action and where we can find a community um, to foster solidarity. The second is that um, young people, we're also thinking about how we can reimagine how decisions are being made around the world. And this is why we are um, actively organizing local, regional, and global conferences of youth as a precursor to the COP and thinking about how young people can contribute to these processes from a bottom-up approach. Um, there are Alcoys this year from 107 countries, including the UK, and we are actively seeking to even expand that moving forward. And I think the last point I want to um, kind of touch on, and probably the most important point for me personally, um, you can see a picture here of uh, me and my colleagues from, um, from government, uh, youth representatives from Fridays for Future and others. Um, and I think our collective message is really that, you know, many of us, we are frustrated with these processes that go on years and years, and we see very limited progress. But also we continue fighting because we do believe that incremental progress through these negotiations and radical change do not have to be mutually exclusive. Um, it's important that we're taking action on the ground every day and making those small changes, but also pushing at the leadership level to see how these institutions with the power, with the influence to take action can best support us. And so I think you know, as much as we can reform the current system, we can also try to push for system change that can allow us to really reshape the way in which we're dealing with climate. So once again, congrats to all the award recipients. I'm really happy to be kind of, you know, really sharing my experience as a youth here among many other youth taking climate action at UCL. And um, thank you very much. And I'll pass to the next speaker, Professor Priti Parikh. Thank you. That's a tough act to follow, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, once again, congratulations to all the award recipients. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky as director of Bartlett School of Sustainable Construction and give a shout out to our Green Onions team here. <laughs> a little bit cheeky of me. <laughs> but today I wanted to share my journey and some of my thoughts on sustainability and climate change. So I grew up in India, and as a teenager, I used to walk around slums, used to engage with slum dwellers. And what struck me at that point is this disparity in housing, in access to very basic services like water sanitation. Um, the houses there were smaller, they were in poor condition, people did not have access to toilets, taps, very basic services and infrastructure. And this thought lingered in my mind as I continued with my university kind of degree, as I continued with my professional and academic career. And in a way, it's this disparity or lack of equity which uh, motivated me to become an engineer. So I'm very much a civil engineer, and my research looks at delivering infrastructure in resource challenge settings. And I use engineering, or attempt to use engineering, as a means to tackling grand challenges like poverty, climate change, or lack of sustainable future, which is facing us. And what I feel which is powerful at UCL, and why I am at UCL as we speak, is because we do interdisciplinary research. And UCL does it, and does it very, very well. And I can say that having worked across a range of universities, that we are pretty good at interdisciplinarity. We embrace it, we walk the talk here on it. And hence, the Sustainable Development Framework actually provides us with a brilliant opportunity to join forces, to join expertise we have across departments and faculties to tackle some of the grand challenges facing us. I remember when I started my journey at UCL, I received a small grant from an external foundation 
to look at evidence links between sanitation and the sustainable development goals. Because sanitation is one of those sectors which suffers from under recognition and under investment. And yet it is so important. And initial evidence which came out, and this was through a collaboration with academics at UCL across four departments and faculties, and it showed that sanitation benefits all 17 goals and 130 out of 169 SDG targets. So basically, if you want to achieve sustainable development, we need to invest in infrastructure and get it right. The message was very clear and simple. And at that point, we started receiving interest from the South African government and charities like WaterAid to scale up our work. And luckily, we secured a grant through Grand Challenges funding, and I'm looking at Simon here, um, which enabled us uh, to develop a collaboration, a longer term collaboration with the South African government, where the government said, we want to take the SDG targets, but we want to prioritize and contextualize and localize it according to our needs. So rather than having a global agenda, we want to take the global agenda and localize this. Um, we also ended up working with WaterAid and the African Minister Council of Water, where we developed policy guidelines and briefs to encourage ministerial councils to foster investment in the sector. So we've been taking this evidence to external organizations, forming partnerships to boost investment in the sector. And I was absolutely thrilled to bits when two years ago, um, my work and the work of our team was recognized through one of the awards here, the Sustainability Research Award. And what the awards do, and I think what funding from bodies like Grand Challenges do, UCL Grand Challenges do, it gives a huge boost to this kind of work, really. It gives recognition, it gives the boost that some of those topics and the work deserves. And on the back of that, now I'm working with the Institution of Civil Engineers, where I'm engaging with our 100,000 membership globally, engineering community, on SDGs, uh, developing a roadmap for the institution. So you can see that sometimes awards, recognition, and the small grants can go a long, long way. My work on infrastructure also links to climate change because I look at infrastructure and resource challenge settings. I was one of the four, a few fortunate, well, I was one of the academics out of uh, the 20 who attended COP26 and COP27. And it is very interesting to see the discussions between developed and less developed nations play out there. And invariably, there is this tension between the need to invest in infrastructure, to the need to invest in development for human development, and how do you protect the environment? How do you consider reduction of emissions? Now, there is a justice dimension to this, because on this planet, 50% of the population contributes to just 10% of emissions. And those nations are now saying, hang on a second, why are you asking us to do X, Y, Z? So now they are demanding more accountability in the negotiations. And that's why the negotiations are quite intense and tough, because you've got a range of nations at different levels of development with a need to invest in their cities, invest in infrastructure, um, with kind of this drive to reduce emissions. So part of the solution is exchange of knowledge and technology. But part of it is really joining forces on how can we can be creative on tackling some of those kind of grand challenges. Once again, uh, a group of us who attended COP secured funding from Grand Challenges um, to further do further work on climate justice and carbon footprinting. Because we thought, hang on a second, we are going around the world telling people what to do, but maybe we should look at our actions. So we started work on a carbon footprinting tool uh, which looked at travel to COP26, COP27. We've secured further funding to look at travel to COP28. But ideally, I mean, this is a tool which if we could expand, we could use for all our travel at UCL, and that would be exciting of it, to look at our own footprint and what we are doing or not doing for the planet. We are also uh, looking into research now on loss and damage, which is quite critical because for the first time we will have accountability on climate change and there's finance attached to that so that countries can go and develop interventions. And there are, there's going to be challenges around ownership, who funds this, and there's going to be long discussions, but if we pull it off, it gives nations more accountability and resources uh, to actively tackle climate change. And in a way, as academics, we have the power to join forces internally with the disciplinary expertise we have. We have the power to join forces with those who work on our estates here. And we can therefore look at the grand challenges in a holistic manner. 
we can provide evidence to policymakers and practitioners who desperately need this evidence uh, to generate action. We can also shape and influence curriculum to make sure that our students, who are the future generations, are activists. Though having heard you, Sihan, I feel that actually uh, we need to keep up with you, <laughs> if I may say so. But there is a body of work we can do to really enable the future generation to take this campaign forward because it is a bit unfortunate that it is the future generation who will suffer the brunt of climate change. This is the legacy we're leaving behind for them. So actually it is our moral duty to do more on this front. This is why as academics, um, we need to be science communicators as well. We need to be able to take our evidence and engage with civil society organizations, um, with the general public on why climate change and sustainable development is so important. If we don't do that, we are not going to be able to drive a change. So I'm going to end with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi to say, be the change you wish to see in this world. Thank you. Thank you very much to um, both Jan and um, Priti for those um, very well thought out pr um, presentations. Thank you very much. So now we're um, up to the stage where um, we will be handing out the special awards with the help of um, Priti. And I'll be um, announcing the categories and Priti will be handing out that the, we're announcing the names of each of the um, winners and um, highly commended in each of the categories. And there are, in each of the categories, as I say, a highly commended um, and also a winner in each category. So the first um, award which we will be presenting is the Staff Award for Outstanding Commitment to Sustainability. And this award is given to the member of staff who most clearly exemplifies an outstanding commitment to driving, encouraging and creating environmental or, or social change at UCL. And the highly commended in this, uh, in this category is? Well, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's Professor Paolo Tatiki, School Deputy Director and Professor in Strategy and Sustainability at UCL School of Management. Congratulations. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, he will not be joining us today. Okay. Uh, Paolo is the um, UCL School of Management Deputy Director and Professor in Strategy and Sustainability and has made uh, many beneficial and important impacts at UCL, including delivering a new sustainability module for, global for the Global Business School for Health MBA and Health, which has received amazing feedback. So, moving on to the next award. Let me just check and see what, what the next one is for. I think it's the winner in this category. <laughs> <laughs> the winner, sorry, for this award. <laughs> Go ahead, Pretty. Okay, I think I'm going to announce the name. And I'm thrilled uh, that this person is in the room. And it's Dr. Denise Bakalchi, Research Fellow in the Department of Targeted Intervention. Congratulations. So Dr. Denise Benitki is the uh, tissue engineer and co is constantly seeking uh, greener alternatives to develop 3D models of healthy and disease tissue models for, from biodegradable uh, materials. In addition to her work, Denise leads the DSIS sustainability team and has implemented a mandatory sustainability induction. So very well done. And thank you very much. Right, I'm going to now try and move through all of these without making any more mistakes. So, so the next award is the Student Award for Outstanding Commitment to Sustainability. And this award is given to the student who most clearly exemplifies an outstanding commitment to driving, encouraging and creating environmental or social change at UCL. So first we have the highly commended award for the Outstanding Commitment to Sustainability and that goes to... 
Well, I'm going to say this is actually an organization very close to my heart. I've been involved with this organization for quite a few years, and it's Engineers Without Borders with Rachel Van, who I think is joining us online. I'm trying to see if you can see Rachel here. I'm not sure we can. <laughs> okay, well, Engineers Without Borders is a student-led project where they deliver hands-on sustainable engineering workshops for students in primary and secondary schools all across London, encouraging young people from different backgrounds to choose a career in engineering. So moving on to the winner. Yes, indeed. So the winner is Tom Weston, Master of Business Administration for the UCL Sustainability Lab. Congratulations. <laughs> So Tom founded the UCL Sustainability Lab in May 2022 as a collaborative sustainability focused platform to build an impactful link between academia and industry and to tackle grand business challenges. Congratulations, Tom. The next award is for uh, is the Sustainability Education Award. And uh, like the others, this award is given to uh, the member of staff and or postgraduate students who have integrated a comprehensive sustainability education plan into the formal or informal curriculum. So firstly, to the highly commended um, award, and that goes to? Well, that goes to Dr. Nicole Bloom and Dr. Francis Hunt from the UCL Institute of Education. Congratulations. <laughs> So created and built by Dr. Nicole Bloom and Dr. Francis Hunt of the IOE, the Educating for Sustainable Development in Schools and um, Universities online short course provides educators with support and continuing professional, professional development to embed ESD within their practice. And now moving on to the winner. Well, the winner is Greening Cities Module, Bartlett School of Architecture. And I think Blanche Cameron here is to pick up the award. The Greening Cities Module was developed and proposed by environmental design lecturer Blanche Cameron and hosted by the Bartlett School of Architecture, BSc Architectural and Interdisciplinary Studies and simultaneously a UCL-wide elective module. The next award is the Sustainability Research Award. And this award is given to the researcher or researchers whose contribution to environment and or society at UCL or beyond has the greatest positive impact. And firstly, the highly commended Sustainability Research Award goes to... Well, this goes to Alexa Wong, Asma Lali, and Rebecca Nastalek, students in the maths faculty. <laughs> Following the mounting mental health and well-being concerns, Right. <laughs> so following the mounting mental health and well-being concerns, Asma, Alexa and Rebecca, under the supervision of Dr. Peter Bratby, pursued a change makers project to understand disabled neurodivergent students' experiences in natural sciences. Congratulations. And now moving on to the winner of the Sustainability Research Award, which goes to? This goes to Professor Catalina Turku, Professor of Sustainable Built Environment, Bartlett School of Planning. Congratulations. <laughs> this is a transdisciplinary research initiative 
that provides scientific evidence through participatory engagement between researchers and policymakers in order to un advance the, un un the understanding and implementation of the UN SDGs and sustainable urban transformations. Congratulations and thank you very much. So now moving on to the Sustainability Impact Award. And this category focuses on the work of teams or societies at UCL who have undertaken an environmental or social initiative which contributes to the signature campaigns of UCL's... <laughs> well, it's not really. <laughs> ...of UCL's Change Positive. So, firstly, to the highly commended um, winner, and that goes to... Well, I'm smiling because uh, I think we benefit from the service, all of us benefit from the services of this one. It's Gather and Gather, food at UCL. And I think we have Cicely Abney Collins receiving the yes award in person. Where is Cicely? So Gather and Gather are committed and have worked hard to serve lower carbon impact foods and reduce the most significant driver of their climate impact at UCL and supporting UCL's campaign, Positive Climate. All food made on site available to purchase is carbon labeled using the award-winning Footsteps Carbon Labels. Well done, Cece. So now moving on to the winner of the Sustainability Impact Award, and that goes to? That goes to Student Zero Food Waste Project. And the award will be collected by Daisy Lee, um, Claudia, Claudia Lowe, and Cynthia Allen. <laughs> there we go. Zero Food Waste is a student-led volunteering project that aims to tackle food waste and enhance sustainability on campus through food re redistribution. Since 2022, the project has organized shifts every Wednesday and Friday afternoons in which volunteers deliver unsold food from nine food outlets, cafes and shops across the campus to nearby homeless shelters, St. Mungo's, Ensley Gardens and Marleybone Project and a local food bank in the Euston area. So congratulations. Right, so up next, it's the special award for an outstanding sustainability plan. And I think this is the, this is the final one. It's the final one. Um, so finally, we'll be handing out the award for the teams that have created a sustainability plan. And the sustainability plan is a bespoke plan which focuses on the unique sustainability opportunities and challenges that are connected to a division or faculty's area of work. And this award goes to? It goes to PALS Green Team, Green Laws, and Mulad Space Science Laboratory for working so hard to create your bespoke plans. Huge congratulations to you. <laughs> Please do come to the front to collect your awards. I think we have Alice uh, Brivel from MSSL Online. John, I think you're here in person. Um, and then I've got Rachel and Jenny, and many more of you, but congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Oh, and yeah, and Alice is just there on the screen, so a quick round of applause for Alice, who's just there at the bottom. Thank you very much, Alice. And that's it for this year. Um, so thank you very much to um, everybody who's submitted and all of our award winners and all of our highly commended for this year, and also to all of our speakers and everybody that's been here in person. As well as that, I've got to thank the, everybody who's been involved in making today work. So thank you very much to all the guest speakers, the AV team, portering and gather and gather for the fantastic food that you served us earlier on. And finally to um, our team, the sustainable um, UCL team, and particularly Max, Ellie and Hannah who have done such a fantastic job in making all of this work. So thank you all very much for um, being involved today.
And as we mentioned, there'll be a QR code on the screen, but there will also be certificate instructions outside, and they can be found outside. And also just carry on. We'll have more networking and drinks outside. And there's cakes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.